Hey, this is Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central, and I'm here to show you the best features of the DaVinci Resolve Mini Panel. What I love about this panel is that it gives you access to all the most commonly used controls in Resolve at a fraction of the price of the full DaVinci Resolve Advanced Panel, which costs something like 30,000 US dollars. The mini panel features three trackballs for color adjustments, as well as three rings for adjusting the exposure of your shadows, midtones, and highlights. There are a number of knobs for commonly used controls like contrast, hue, and saturation, as well as eight knobs at the top of the panel that correspond to the values on the two high resolution LCD displays. On the left side of the LCD screen, there are buttons for navigating through the resolve panels. And on the right side, there are controls for adding nodes, navigating stills and keyframes, and turning on the highlight feature, among others. To the right of the trackballs, there are button controls for grabbing stills, navigating through the timeline, disabling nodes or grades, and even buttons for undo, redo, and resetting nodes. If it's your first time using a panel, it may seem intimidating, but trust me, this panel is incredibly easy to learn and will improve your grading efficiency almost immediately. First of all, let's look at the trackballs and rings that make up the core of this panel. With the rings, you have exposure control for the lift, gamma, and gain, and with the trackballs, you have color control for those three tonal ranges as well. I can reset my adjustments for each tonal range with the buttons above the trackballs. The RGB button resets color, the level button resets the exposure, and the all button resets both color and exposure. On an image like this, encoded in red log gamma, I might want to have access to the offset control to center the trace in the middle of the waveform. Well, you can do that with the Resolve Mini Panel by pressing the offset button and using the rightmost exposure ring to make adjustments. Like before, the buttons above the trackballs will reset color and exposure parameters for the offset. In this case, I liked my offset adjustment, so I'll undo the reset by pressing the undo button on the right of the panel. I'll press offset again to return to my lift, gamma, and gain controls, and I'll make an exposure adjustment using the rings. I like to keep my color adjustments separate from my exposure changes, so I'll press the serial node button at the top of the panel to add another node. Using the saturation knob, I'll increase the saturation. If I don't like what I did, I can just push the knob in to reset the parameter and try again. Now for color, I'll make changes to the gamma and gain trackballs simultaneously to add warm colors to the highlights and slightly counteract that change in the midtones. That's a good start, but I'd like to finesse the colors with the secondary tools. I'll press the curves button and as I do that, you'll see the LCD panels update with new controls. I want to start with the hue versus hue control, so I'll press the corresponding button at the top. I now have access to all six color vectors as well as the input hue for each color. I'll start with the yellow vector, twisting the knob to the left until the background colors look more natural. You'll also see an improvement in the talent skin tones. I'd also like to push the sky more towards cyan, so I'll simultaneously adjust the cyan and blue vectors. Now let's work on saturation. I'll press the hue for saturation button at the top and raise the saturation of the red and yellow vectors and improve the look of the sky by reducing the cyan saturation while raising the blue. Lastly, I'd like to reduce the global saturation, which I can do with the saturation knob. Here's a before and after of our color adjustment, which I can show you by toggling the disable button on the far right. As a final adjustment for this clip, I'd like to add some focus by bringing down the exposure and saturation surrounding our subject. I'll do this by adding a node with the serial button, then pressing the window button. I can switch between the different windows by pressing the buttons at the top. With the circle window selected, I'll press the window on button. I can adjust all the window parameters right from these knobs. I'll adjust the pan control to move the shape to the right, then the aspect control to make the window more narrow. I'll slightly adjust the tilt to raise the shape and add some softness. To see exactly what area we're affecting, I can press the highlight button. Now that we can see this a bit better, I'll increase the size of the shape and adjust the softness. I also need to invert the shape. This can be done by pressing the tools button and then the invert button. I'll turn off the highlight feature by again pressing the button 
And now we can apply the focus by reducing the exposure with the gain in gamma rings. And raise the shadows up a bit with the lift ring. This will help hide our window. Lastly, I'll reduce the saturation. Let's see how we did. A quick way to turn off the window guides is to switch to another panel like the qualifier panel. Then I'll use the disable button to turn the correction on and off. I can also use the bypass button to show a before and after of the entire grade. If I use the previous node and next node buttons, I can go through one by one and see how our grade was constructed. Let's play the shot back with the transport controls in the bottom right of the panel. I can stop the playback with the stop button or play in reverse with the reverse button. I can also move one frame at a time with the next and previous frame controls. Very nice. Let's move to the next shot by pressing the next clip button above the playback controls. For this shot, we'll take a similar approach as we did with the previous shot by correcting the exposure, color, and then adding focus, but we'll try out some new tools that you can access on the DaVinci Resolve mini panel. On the first note, let's start out by adjusting our exposure. This time, I'm going to use the curves. It would be good to give ourselves a better starting point. I'll use the lift and gain exposure rings to stretch out the trace in the Luma waveform. Now I'll press the curves button and switch to the custom curves. I'll start by making an S curve using the knobs for 20% and 60% points at the same time. I'll increase the 60% point while reducing the 20% point. Then I'll increase the 40% point just slightly and increase the bottom or the 0% point just a touch. Okay, exposure is looking good. Let's now work on color and again, I'd like to do this in a separate node, so I'll press the serial button. This time, I'll adjust the color with the temperature and tint controls. I can access this by pressing the primary button and then the next page button. You'll see the temperature and tint controls on the right LCD display. I'll warm up the shot with the temperature control and twist the tint knob to the right slightly to add a little magenta. Now like before, we'll finesse the colors in the curves panel. I'll switch the panel control to hue versus hue. Then I'll use the yellow knob to add some more red magenta to the yellows in the shot. And turn the red knob slightly to the left to improve the skin tones. Now to create complementary color contrast, I want to change the color of the car from its current blue hue to a more cyan teal color. So using the blue vector, I'll turn the knob to the right. As a final color adjustment, let's go to the Hoover saturation curve and increase the saturation for the red vector. Now let's quickly add some focus to our subject. I'll do this by adding a node with the serial button, then pressing the window button, then window on, and size and position the circle shape around our talent. I'll also increase the softness. This time, I'd like to bring the exposure up on our talent, so I'll do that by turning the gain ring to the right while turning the gamma ring to the left to maintain contrast. This clip features shaky handheld camera work, so I want to make sure that the window stays with our talent. I'll press the tracker button on the panel and the track forward button at the top. Let's play the clip back and see how we did. I'll switch to a different panel to remove the window outline and enter the full viewer mode by pressing this button. Then I'll press the loop button on the right side of the panel and play the clip back. Looking great. Let's move on to one more clip and check out some more tools that this panel has to offer. I'll leave the full viewer mode and move to the next clip. For this shot, I'll use the contrast control to work with the exposure. I'll turn the knob to the right to increase the contrast. Then to recover some detail, I'll adjust the pivot. To finesse the exposure, I can use the shadow and highlight knobs. These adjust the shadow and highlight exposure while protecting against any changes to the midtones. I'll increase the shadow control while reducing the highlight control. That is pretty awesome. We'll add another serial node for color, and this time, I'm going to adjust the color with the custom curves. Let's go to the curves panel and then press custom and tools. Now you can see at the top of the LCD screens that we can access color channels individually. First, we'll press the button to ungang the channels 
and then select red. I'll make an S curve to add cyan to the undertones and red to the overtones. I can do this with the 20% and 80% knobs. Then in the blue channel, I'll bring the top or the 100% point down to add some more warmth to the highlights. While this is looking pretty good, it's a little too strong. Let's press the keyer button and then reduce the output gain, dialing this color adjustment to taste. Okay, the color looks pretty good, but I'd like to bring some color back to the sky. We'll do this with an HSL qualifier. To make sampling the sky much easier, we'll go back to the image before the color adjustment. I'll do this using a parallel node, which I can add with the parallel button. Then I'll move to the qualifier panel by pressing the qualifier button and then pressing the highlight button so we can see what our selection is. I'll start with the hue selection, narrowing the width and adding some softness. Then adjusting the center. At first, the selection is going to be rough. We just want to make sure that we're grabbing all of the sky. Next, I'll move to saturation. The selection will be on the very low side, so I'll reduce the height control significantly. I'll also add a little bit of softness and then reduce the selection a little bit more. Okay, that's better, but there's still work to do. To access the luminance control, press the next page button. Then I'll turn the knob for the low control to the right, add some softness, and continue to turn the low to the right until we get a selection that looks something like this. Now we can refine the mat. I'll press the next page button again to get to the mat finesse controls. I'll adjust the blur and the white clip. That should work well. Now let's turn off the highlight feature by pressing the button. With the track balls, I'll add cyan to the highlights and in the midtones. I went a little too far, so I'll quickly back off the correction with the saturation control. Now the sky is greatly improved. Let's make one final correction to this image. I'll append a node to the end of the timeline by pressing the append button. And like before, I'll move to the window panel to add some focus. I'll turn on a circle window and size and position it around the talent. Add some softening and invert it. I'll use the exposure rings to reduce the gamma and gain and increase the lift. Then to add even a little bit more style, I'll press the blur button and add some blur. Then I'll press the tracker button and track the shape forward. I'll move to a different panel to remove the shape guide and press the viewer button to enter the full screen view mode. Then play the clip back. Wow, that looks awesome. Having the panel to assist us greatly improved our speed and efficiency with this grade. Again, I'm Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central. I hope that you enjoyed this hands-on demo of the DaVinci Resolve Mini Panel. If you want to learn more about Resolve, be sure to check out our website at colorgradingcentral.com. Thanks for watching.